Hi, in this tutorial, I will show you how to use procedural generation in our pack. Without further ado, let's start. First, go into the Blueprints folder inside the Content Browser and drag and drop the main blueprint onto the landscape. It worth noting that our PCG only works on landscapes. After placing the blueprint, you can scale, move, and rotate it however you want. Now, in the Details panel, you can click the Generate button. And immediately, lots of meshes are generated. There are many different parameters like scale, density, materials, and so on. And also, they allow you to customize every component. And you can check them on your own, but I just want to show you some additional features that this blueprint has. Let's start with the path spline. Uh, you can see I added the spline component to the blueprint and positioned it like this. Add a tag path to it. Go back to the blueprint's details panel and click generate. As you can see, the meshes placed on the path area were offset to the sides. Let's try a different path shape. If you disable this option, the graph will be updated automatically. So you don't need to click the generate button each time after making changes. Of course, you can control the offset intensity of each component. Now there is a free area, so it looks like a rod or something similar. Our blueprint has the box settings where you can visualize things like the offset area of each component. And now it shows the area in which spike rocks will be affected by the spline. You can change the size of this area by adjusting the offset threshold value of the desired component. Sometimes you may need to move the spline just a bit if it doesn't work as expected. Another feature in this blueprint is mountains. Let's add a closed spline with a tag mountain. Select all the spline points and move them lower to the ground level. Perfect, however, we can see that some parts of the mountain slope are facing the wrong direction. Sometimes this can happen you can go to the mountain section and change this setting. Now it's fixed. Let's increase the size of the slope. And play with the top part scale values. As a result, we have a cool looking mountain. Now let me show you another feature I added to a closed spline with a tag water assigned to it. This feature helps you create water puddles or even lakes. Let me change the material of the water. Now just change the position of the spline and you can have this toxic lake between the mountains. Let's add pebbles to the level, play with density and masking values so you can see more of them on the ground. It looks cool, but sometimes you don't need that much detail over the whole area. What you can do is enable these settings so pebbles will only be generated with the path area. You can visualize this area in the debug menu. And of course, you can change the size of the generation area too. Besides pebbles, you can add more details by generating foliage. By default, it generates only in the path spline area. Let's generate this type of foliage. You can play with scale and masking values and generate multiple types of foliage simultaneously. Let's visualize some settings for the foliage. This red circle shows the area where foliage will be removed inside the path area. You can set this value to zero so nothing will be removed. 
let's change the scaling to its whole value as well so it's easier to see what the green circle shows you so this circle shows you the area where the foliage will be scaled down the closer it is to the center you can increase the scaling intensity as well by the way foliage can be spawned on the top meshes with collision that you will place by yourself i placed this default cube in the procedural area and now if i click generate foliage will be appeared on the top of it but if you want foliage to ignore this cube go to the mesh collision presets change it to custom and choose world dynamic here now the foliage will be generated as before the last thing i will show you is two ways to remove some generated meshes from the area the first way is to add a closed spline then you can enable debug remove area now you can add different tags to remove specific meshes from the area such as trees spike rocks hills and so on as you can see you can combine multiple tags as well on the screen you can see all the tags for removing certain components the second way is just to use separate object for that um, you can assign the same tags as you saw before they just make this object invisible and now you can transform this object however you want and components in the object area will be removed that's all for now play with the values splines add your own custom detailed materials and create unique beautiful environments